This review has been made possible by Toyota of Naperville. As you know, Toyota has tons of brand new Toyotas available for purchase, but did you know that they also have a remarkable selection of used cars? Head on over to toyotaofnaperville.com and look through hundreds of used cars for sale right now. Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I'm driving a 2011 Dodge Charger RT Max. Up front is a 5.7 liter V8 down below is a five-speed automatic transmission. Now this is the RT and the Max, so we do have a bunch of the bells and whistles. This is one of the top trims for the Charger of 2011, and so we'll get into that in a little bit. But let's get back to that 5.7 liter Hemi. It's a Hemi engine. Dodge makes that very known that it's a Hemi. That's the name that Dodge sticks by, the Hemi. It's the 5.7, you'll find it in pretty much every flavor of Dodge, Chrysler, Jeep product, 370 horsepower, 395 foot-pounds of torque, which is nothing to thumb your nose at, but it gets you a whopping 16 miles to the gallon in the city and 25 on the highway. It does have cylinder deactivation. However, some of these engines with cylinder deactivation it kind of fails after a while luckily this car it's still together but if you are looking into buying one of these you might want to look into that so some just to be careful of but it does have cylinder deactivation to get 25 miles of the gallon on the highway in a v8 i mean that's that's decent v8s used to not be able to do that it was nine in the city 10 on the highway so 25 not bad all right so we're approaching the back straightaway on the test track roll the window down hopefully get a little bit of noise for you here uh 5.7 liter v8 370 horsepower yeah you definitely feel that torque the torque is what really gets you and what really feels good about the charger the rt the charger rt more specifically isn't a very fast car it's not going to blow the doors off a lamborghini it's not some secret hidden sleeper however in a sedan it's interesting to have that much torque out of a sedan there's very few cars that can say that i'm thinking honestly the chevy ss had a lot of torque the lexus isf that i drove had a lot of torque it's not that common to have a bunch of torque in a sedan at this level so that is a nice feature and Honestly, for the price point now on the used car market, it's not a bad deal for that much power. Like I said, Paraduit is a five-speed automatic transmission. It's fine. I can plus minus it if I'd like. This is more of a, this is a sedan. This is a daily driver sedan. This is very different than the Challenger. We'll talk about that a little bit later on, but the Challenger should 100% be manual, but this, I'm kind of okay with it being automatic. Last but not least, of course, the Charger is rear wheel drive. They did offer all wheel drive versions, the V6, I drove a 2016 version of that. I'll leave that at the end of the video. But let's talk about the interior. We have a fair amount to talk about in that regard. Starting off with the gauges. On my far left, I have a tachometer with coolant temperature at the bottom. And on the right, I have my speedometer with my fuel at the bottom. And then I have a screen in the center. Before we get to that screen, the arrows on the gauges are very interesting. They actually have a distinguished arrow tip normally most arms or i guess dials I'm not really sure what you want to call them in other cars it's just a straight line always has been always will be but this it's actually a distinguished arrow tip which is pretty retro i like that a lot but that center screen it's displaying a couple different things right now it's my miles per hour and actual digits my odometer which direction i'm pointing outside temperature and that is it but I can change it to trip info, tire pressure, vehicle info. Let's see what it can tell me about that. Coolant temperature, oil temperature, oil pressure, trans temperature, engine hours, and that is it. So I do get a hefty amount of information in that little center screen. It's sort of a barbaric, you know, it's sort of a Game Boy Advanced level of quality of the screen, but it gives me a lot of information about the car and I can keep my eye on things and monitor things as I'd like. On the steering wheel on the left, I have my voice commands, phone options, and then my selectors for that center screen and the gauges we just talked about. And on the right, I do have my cruise control settings, 
which is very nice. I can change the distance between vehicles at the click of a button. So it's not quite full radar cruise control. It won't bring you to a stop, but it does give me some selectability there. And I really, really like that. And then on the door, I have two different memory seats and my power windows, power locks, and power mirrors. Pretty simple there. I do like the stitching on the door. I think it adds a nice little touch. It makes me feel like I'm not in a base model because I'm not. Getting to the center, we do have a very nice, very sizable display. For 2011, this is a very, very good size. Pretty responsive. I can control my heated seats and steering wheel through here. My climate controls, I can turn the screen off. My phone options, navigation. There's even a more button. I could have serious travel link or I could go to my settings, change my display, clock, safety, lights. I mean, a lot of selectability here in the screen. Dodge has always done a really good job with their screens, and I really, really like it. However, there's two things that are sort of messed up, and this is where the problems are really starting for me on the charger. First of all, the backup camera doesn't work. It, it just, whenever I put it into reverse, it just shows a black screen. It still tells me to check my surroundings, but it's just a black screen. I don't know if the actual camera has died or the wiring has died or the plug has, I, I don't know why this happens, but there should be a backup camera. This particular example, that is broken. And honestly, I would say, okay, you know, it's broken, whatever. Yeah, I'm sure the dealer will fix it. I'm sure I could take it somewhere. It, it shouldn't be too hard of a fix. Honestly, a backup camera isn't that hard to fix. I would be okay with that if, if that was this car's only issue it's not it's not this car's only issue we'll get into that a little bit later on actually we'll talk about it right now because i plugged in my phone i'd like to listen to a little bit of music as i'm starting to get to know the car and when i plugged my phone in i do have usb and aux inputs it would not stop shuffling my music it would not stop i couldn't figure out and i still haven't figured out why when i plug my phone in it just auto cycles my whole playlist without stopping I have no idea why. I, I, I hit pause on my phone. It still did it. It was the weirdest thing. It was slightly possessed. Not sure what that's all about. But moving away from the center screen, I do have my climate controls. I do have auto climate, dual zone. Very, very nice. I do like that. That is, that is very, very nice. Down below that, I have a CD player and a SD card in. SD card is for the navigation. And then down below, I do have a 12 volt outlet, which I love, 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 love the fact that Chrysler does this. They put the key or a battery logo on the outlet. So I know that this outlet will only get power when the car is on. If it had a battery, then it would get power all the time. I absolutely love that. It's a very nice distinguishing feature. They've done this since at least 2004 to my knowledge. And I don't know why other auto manufacturers haven't caught on to this. It's so simple. It's so easy. It would cost them 0, 0.00 cents to do, but it helps me out a ton. Then we have the shifter and the shifter area. I have this nice little cubby hole to the right of it. But as you can see, the shifter has somewhat cracked. Don't know how that happens, but it did. Shifter feels fine. I can plus minus it, like I said, if I want to, but not really gonna. Then I have two cup holders, which surprisingly enough, are heated and cooled. So if you have a cold drink, you can cool your cup holder, or if you have a warm drink, you can warm your cup holder. However, again, if you look at the bottom of the cup holders, the paint inside the cup holders, the sealant has not quite held up. Not, not the best. Now getting to the seats, the seats are very comfortable. Like I said, they're heated, they're memory, they're power. Everything you want out of a modern seat, at least a nine year old seat, I have here, very, very comfortable. Dodge products are always some of the most comfortable products. I absolutely love that. Speaking of the seats though, we will do a back seat review. All right, so we're in the back of the 2011 Dodge Charger RT Max. Very, very comfortable back here. I mean, these back seats are great. Dodge knows comfortable cars. That's it, that's the bottom line. Dodge makes very, very comfortable cars. I have heated seats back here, which is a huge draw, and a 12 volt outlet as well. Again, run off the key, and I know that because it says it. I absolutely love that. Center console here, have a little storage cubby hole, and then two cup holders as well, folds up. It's very nice back here. Driving people around, this is a great experience. I would love to ride in the back of one of these for a while. Leg room is great. My knees don't have a prayer of touching the front seat. 
heated seats back here. I mean, what more do you want? I love it back here. I really, really do. All right, so I figured I would do a little uh, trunk review as well. A little button, as you can see, backup camera, button. Backup camera, button. I mean, so much room, so much room. Really, really good. Great space. I do have a cargo net. Seems kind of unnecessary because it's at the very back of the trunk, but maybe you can move that up, maybe? Nope, don't see any hooks. Okay, okay. Cool, 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 cool. Now we have to talk about the looks. I've always liked this generation of Charger. I've always thought that th these look really good. Now, 2011 is the first year for this body style, and they've actually recently moved on from this body style, but I think overall, it doesn't look like an 11-year-old car. It looks good. It looks really, really good. I really, really enjoy the look of this. I like the sort of racing band tail light. I like the aggressive hood. I think overall it just it works well together i think overall it's a good looking sedan and i say sedan this is chargers used to not be sedans chargers used to be the big bad muscle cars from the dukes of hazard however they have sort of morphed into these sedans and so i'm going to look at it with 2020 eyes and just accept the fact that this is a sedan i know people fight oh the charger shouldn't be a sedan it shouldn't be a sedan well it is for now, it is. And so I have to look at it as such. And I'm okay with that. I like a V8 sedan. I like the features in here. I think it drives well. For a daily driver with a little bit of extra power, it's great. This is really great. What I don't like about it and what would keep me from purchasing one of these myself is the quality. Like I said, the backup camera no longer works. The infotainment won't stop shuffling my music. The shifter, it's cracked and worn. The cup holders have lost all their paint. These cars don't hold up well. And I wish I could point to one thing. I wish I could say, oh, it's the infotainment screen. If you just swap that out, or if Dodge just swapped that out, then it would be better. No, it's the plastics in here. It's the rubber in here. It's the engine, the engine. It's just the ticking time bomb for the cylinder deactivation to quit working. The transmissions are not known for their reliability. I don't have any firsthand experience with a transmission going out in a charger. However, my transmission went out on my 98 Dodge Ram. The transmission is clunking on my 2004 Chrysler Pacifica. Dodge isn't known for their transmissions. Do a quick Google search and you'll learn that very quickly. I really want to like the charger. I really want to. It's a cool, good looking V8 sedan and we need more V8 sedans in this modern world where sedans are going away. Ford stopped making them. Chevy's on the brink of stopping to make them. This is sort of a dying breed, but when they're built like this, I don't blame them. I wish this car held up better. I, I wish this car lasted longer. I wish this had the build quality of some of its rivals, but it just doesn't. And so while I'm, I'm enjoying it now, would I spend my money on one? No, I wouldn't. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Toyota of Naperville for letting me take out their Charger. They have tons and tons of great, amazing cars on the lot. I cannot recommend Toyota of Naperville enough. They have the best service. They're super kind, and they've been awesome the last almost two years we've been working together. I absolutely love that. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe really like to take care guys